This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenome from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Kenna Security. I'm sitting down right now with Jonathan Cran, who's going to show us a demo of the Kenna Security platform. Take it away. Thanks, Marley. Yeah, no problem. Uh, what you're looking at right here is the Kenna Security platform, and this is the dashboard that shows up as soon as you log into the platform. And you can see there's risk meters on this, and we'll come back to those risk meters for in, in one moment. But what I wanted to show first is actually the connectors that Kenna has available to it. So Kenna Security, as you, you may or may not know, uh, works with uh, many sources of security data. And I'll just show you a list of those here. Oh, wow. And it's pretty much everything you can pull security data from and, and is actively adding uh, connectors on a daily basis. Um, here we have over uh, 30 connectors. You can see things like uh, uh, Qualys, mm -hmm. things like Nessus, things like Rapid7. And so let's just drill down into one of these for a moment here. I'll click on the Qualys one. And you can see here we can uh, connect to Qualys's API. And we can pull security data uh, up to uh, uh, 10,000 assets very quickly, uh, giving you the ability to pull in all your asset data uh, on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Hmm. And as soon as you plug in your credentials, what we, what we do is we start to suck in that, that vulnerability data on the assets. And so it'll start to show up in Kenna. Okay. And so uh, let's go back to uh, home here. And you'll see uh, we have vulnerability uh, data, we have asset data, we have fixed data already available in the interface here. And if you click and drill down on one of these, um, you can actually see the specifics for that particular vulnerability. And you see in this case it's a cross-site scripting vulnerability with a score, a mm -hmm. risk score of 92 out of 100. Um, the CVSS score is 6 on this, so mm -hmm. there's quite a difference between the Kenna score and the CVSS score, and we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Um, let's go back to the dashboard so we can look at all these different risk meter groups. And I'll kind of explain how these work. Um, a risk meter score can go up to 1,000. Mm -hmm. um, you see in this case here we have uh, some that are higher, some that are lower. And if we click on one of these, and you'll see the risk meter score loads over here. Mm -hmm. And risk meter scores basically take into account the asset information, you know, how business critical is this particular asset. They take into account the vulnerability information, you know, how, what is the CDSS score, what is the severity of a given vulnerability, but also we take into account the threat data. Uh, and so things that are actively being exploited in the wild are higher. And so this gives uh, remediation teams, this gives security teams a better picture of what's actually needing to be fixed right now. It helps them prioritize their work in a way that uh, essentially makes the, the, the challenge viable, <laughs> whereas in the past it just wasn't right. uh, possible to do this. And so, again, we can drill down into these individual vulnerabilities or we can view them as a group here. And you can see a list, and we can sort by score. Um, and so you can see the top vulnerabilities show up at the score. And we also have these great facets up here that allow you to drill into uh, things like what are, what are actively being exploited, you know, where are things happening in the wild, mm -hmm. what things are easily exploitable, meaning there's an exploit in a given kit for it, um, what things are exploitable by malware in the wild, or what, what are uh, integrated into exploit kits um, being used uh, as malware. Mm -hmm. Which are popular targets, you know, there, there are exploits against these particular things in the wild. Um, and this is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. We're able to tell you if there are zero-day vulnerabilities based on some feeds that we have access to um, that allow you to, uh, to know, um, even if they haven't been released publicly, that these things Very will, cool. will, are, are possibly exploited uh, or are exploitable. So um, going back to the dashboard here, um, and you can see we have different views of it, um, and we can drill down. And these risk meter groups allow you to... Uh, uh, group vulnerabilities and assets for your remediation teams mm -hmm. and distribute that work, but it also allows you to show uh, reporting for a given uh, group of assets. Mm -hmm. And so let's just take our web servers here. And um, a cool, a particularly useful feature um, is going here to the top fixes, and it'll show you uh, which things uh, are are most useful to fix right now, mm -hmm. and it shows you what it'll do to the score. Ah. So this is incredibly useful for prioritizing work. 
Again, um, you can kick out a ticket here and send it off to your team in order to you know, encourage them to fix it. Um, or you can actually just work here in the interface and it'll show you all the details wow. of that particular vulnerability. Yep. And um, if you want to see the report for this particular uh, asset group, we can click here on reporting and it'll give you an overview um, of the asset group itself. Mm -hmm. It'll show you what's happened over time and you can see that this has grown over time in terms of its risk meter score, probably new vulnerabilities coming mm -hmm. in or it, it could also be uh, active attacks in the wild against the vulnerabilities of these particular uh, assets. And you can kind of see a breakdown here and this becomes very, very useful for someone who wants to be able to get a, 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 a high level picture of how these assets are uh, performing and the risk level of these. And this historical risk information is incredibly critical um, for teams that want to be able to see it over time. Oh, wow, a full timeline view. Okay. Yep, you got it. You got it. So this, uh, this reporting we see going to the CISO more often, and we mm -hmm. see the uh, uh, prioritization and fix information going to IT teams. So really for security teams, this kind of pulls the whole thing together, where that just wasn't really possible in the past. Having the ability to pull all these different connectors into a single place, all that different data into a single uh, location, and then be able to distribute that work as well as report on it, really is what sets Kenna apart. Cool. Thank you so much for uh, sitting down and showing me this and demoing everything. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, and that's all the time that we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.